sometimes you see a creative photograph online using some advanced post-processing technique and you wonder to yourself, how the hell they did it? That was the case with me about six years ago when I saw a photograph posted by one of the well-known Sydney photographers here in Australia. And it was a shot of a surfer standing on a beach with this incredible blurred background. It looked a bit like motion blur, but when I tried to recreate that photograph with one of my own shots using motion blur, I quickly realized that it didn't use that at all. So I dug deep into Google and eventually I found somebody talking about the technique. Turned out it used a tool that is unique to Adobe Photoshop. Unique to Adobe Photoshop to this day, it's not available in any other photo editor. And I learned how to recreate that shot. Over the years, I've used it a few times on my photographs when I've had a shot and I thought, oh, this would work really well with that particular technique. But it popped into my head again recently because I was thinking about these amazing new tools in the Adobe suite with the machine learning, with the AI subject selection and the object selection and that kind of stuff because I thought, hmm, this would make that technique even easier. I dug out a couple of my photographs that lend themselves well to this technique and tested it. And sure enough, it's now super easy to create this technique. It's extremely effective. The results look stunning. And I'm going to show you precisely how to do it. Uh, guys, here is the photograph that we're going to transform. And we're going to change it from this into this. This uses a tool that is unique to Adobe Photoshop called the Path Blur Tool. It's way more advanced than a simple motion blur, which is what most people guess is going on in photos like this. But if you actually sit and look at this photo for a second, you realize that could never be the case because motion blur blurs everything along the same lines. And if you look at this photograph, they're all on different axes. So first thing we need to do is move into Adobe Photoshop. I am using the new beta version. First things first, we need to duplicate the background layer. Do Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Next thing we need to do is select the subject because we need to isolate him from the background. This is why this technique is a lot easier now. In previous versions of Photoshop, you'd have to use something like the magnetic lasso or, you know, any of the other traditional selection techniques. Now you can just click on select subject and nine times out of 10, it does a bang on job. I don't know if it's gonna do it in this case because the subject is so small and we'll probably have to use the object selection. Let's have a look. Yep, couldn't find it. So we're gonna go straight to the object selection tool and we're just gonna drag it over this dude here. I'm not gonna worry about his shadow, just him. There he is selected. Now I'm going to feather that selection slightly, just a one pixel feather on him. And now I'm going to press Command or Control J again to move him to his new layer. So now if I press Option click, you can see we've isolated our surfer. Okay, so I'm going to click on this duplicated layer here. And because we're dealing with quite small features usually in this photo, it's not always, you can use quite large structures and things, as I will demonstrate a bit later, you don't have to use generative fill for this kind of stuff. The old content aware fill will do just as good a job because apart from anything else, we're going to be blurring the ever loving crap out of this layer. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to press shift delete to call up the old fill tool, select content aware and I'm not going to worry about the shadow. Actually, that's while we're here, let's just get rid of that too. So we've got a nice clean area to blur. So now we've just got our surfer there on his own layer and we can now apply the path blur. 
Okay, let's deselect. I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur Gallery, Path Blur. Now, by default, it's going to give you a little path blur line. And the way this works is you can apply curve points and blur along the axis of this line. And it's the reason why this is so sophisticated, so much better than a motion blur. Everything's in one direction, motion blur. With this, you can have multiple lines. And I found that shouldn't really add more than about three or four, maybe five of these points. If you do too many, they kind of overlap and actually it's quite counterintuitive. It, it doesn't look the best. So I'm just going to follow the natural contours of this wave. Just going to drag these points around a little bit so we get a little bit of oscillation. It doesn't have to completely follow the line. Don't stress too much about it. I've got another line here, so I'm going to click once and then click twice and then close again the line. I'm going to put a point here. Just drag that down a little bit. I'm going to put another point here, another one there. Put one here so I can drag it down. Quite like that curve as it is, but I'm gonna put another one in here just to smooth that out a little bit. That's looking good. Let's put a line in across here, and that's gonna put a little upward curve on that one. And I'm gonna put a curve also on the sky. It's just gonna blur it like that, almost like it's like a convex. Let's follow the line of the sand down the bottom here going to curve that up there maybe put one here just to create some interest in the sand not looking like we promised so far and that is for one simple reason we need to speed it up and to do this you're going to turn the speed up to full 500 percent and watch what happens when i release the mouse it's going to do a little bit of rendering and hey presto we've got a beautiful abstract looking scene here i'm quite happy with how that's looking i like how the sand's gone twisty with a nice little curve on this way let's click ok to apply it now because this is a fine art image and we're abandoning all notions of reality really in this photo we can let loose a little bit with the colors and the sharpness and the clarity and that kind of stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up to the old camera raw filter here and I'm just going to crank up the contrast. I was just going to really, really make those colors more saturated and pop. I'm also going to bring up the shadows to bring back the detail in the sand there. I don't want to bring the highlights down. Maybe bring up white very slightly. And then I'm also going to add a bump to clarity to further increase that contrast. That's looking good going to click OK to apply that. So far, so good. But as you may have noticed, the old surfer looks like he's levitating on the sand. Perfectly natural figure. That's exactly the position he was in in this location when I took the photograph. But we need to sell it. And the way you sell things like this in Photoshop is you give things shadows so they look like natural light. Now, I could, if I wanted, duplicate this layer again and then make a mask, invert it, black conceals, remember, and move that above. And then what I could do is grab the old paintbrush, flick over to white and paint in his existing shadow. So I'm just going to do that. I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll give you an alternative option. I'm just going to drop the opacity down and the flow big soft brush and we'll just draw this shadow in now can you see why i don't do this yep it's pulled back all of the kind of uh, detail in the sand that we've got rid of with this incredible looking path blur so sometimes this works it does depend on the image sometimes it works and we could change the overlay mode here uh, to sort of lighten or something like that and it would look okay and we could even go in and sort of remove all these spots but that is not what I'm going to do I'm going to delete this layer completely and what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our surfer dude command J again and we're going, going to edit transform flip vertical hit the old move key V drag down Put him down there. 
and then I am going to fill him with black. So I'll press Shift Delete again, select black, make sure preserve transparency is ticked, otherwise it'll fill the entire layer. Click OK. There's our surfer. We need to put him underneath that layer. And I'm just going to go to Gaussian Blur. Ever faithful Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to put a little bit of a blur on that. We want it to look like a shadow, not like a cardboard cutout. Don't want to go too far there. We want some detail in there. That's looking pretty nice. 5.4. And I'm just going to drop the opacity down on that layer so the sand and what have you is showing through. That's looking pretty nice. And that, my friends, is all there is to it. All you have to do then is flatten the image, or you can keep it as a layered PSD if you think you might come back to it. I don't. I'm going to flatten the image and save it out as a TIFF, and you've got this incredible looking image. Very beautiful, fine art style, abstract image with this beautiful wavy path blur effect look what it's done to these waves just absolutely stunning i absolutely love it i'm just going to flick back to lightroom quickly and find my collection of path blur images and i will show you some more examples of this here's an example of quite a large subject and in this case i actually painted back in the original shadows using the technique i just showed you so these are all from the original layer, which are duplicated and faintly painted them back in. You don't want a sort of cardboard cutout stuck on the sand and stuff like that. Here's another good one. Didn't have to do very much with the, the shadow of this one at all because on the original photograph it was very little, so it looks quite natural anyway. Got these horses on the beach. This was really nice because you've got these very kind of straight lines running through the image. So you can see what I did here with the path blur where I just curved it around to create this kind of concave effect to sort of draw your eye in towards the center of the image. This one came out really nicely. And in this one, this is where you kind of have to use a kind of, uh, you know, artistic chops. Uh, I did duplicate the layer. And when I, and what I wanted to do was bring in some of the ripples, the trail of this guy walking through the surf. So I just faintly painted in on that mask with the white brush just a little bit here to kind of sell it so it looks natural. Uh, the couple of people walking on the beach. Uh, these are the original shadows, which I painted back in. Because the figures are quite small, it was no problem with textures coming through on that. So the original shadows were the best in that case. Here's one of me looking deeply and meaningful over the horizon. This one came out nice, didn't it? Uh, these are just four friends walking down the beach at sunset, having a good old chat couple of surfers heading home at the end of the day. Here's his dad and his daughter playing. So this is kind of one of my favorite silhouetted shots. And I wonder what it looked like with the path layer. And it came out really nice, didn't it? But here's an example of a very large object, which I isolated from the background. Using the subject AI subject selection tool in Photoshop, I selected the entire wharf and this boat and they did a pretty nice job. And then I was able to use the path blur on the rest of the shot and get this beautiful kind of funky abstract effect on the background that looks brilliant. Here's one that came out really nicely, these pelicans. And again, this is where I did simple concave path blur lines. And finally, we got some more pelicans on a log. So I isolated pelis and the log and then blurred everything in the background. So there you go, guys. That's how to create some really cool fun art style abstract photo shots using those little stick figures or larger subjects if you prefer. And it's, as you can see, a really simple technique. And you can get quite funky with your own paths when you're doing your own blurs. Remember just to follow the natural contours that are in the image, and it will just work perfectly. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave a comment down below if you'd like to see more of this sort of content on my channel. Do also consider subscribing for more photo, video, and drone related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta ta.